Hello. Hi. It's Stephanie Fine, and this is our um, ounce of prevention chat. Woohoo! It's Thursday, 12:30. That's why we're here. That's Pacific Standard Time. And it just feels like a million years since I spoke to you last. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so I'm very happy to be with you now. And I'm excited to talk about our topic today because I actually had this experience yesterday. <laughs> so, I mean, it just happens all the time. And it's good to, to get things, um, processes that go on automatically now for me to slow them down because um, I know that they can be helpful and I had to learn them myself and now they're just sort of more ingrained in there. So I'm Dr. Stephanie Fine. I am here to talk to you about keeping weight off. That's really it. Once you've lost it, maintaining it, losing it to get to that point, and then keeping it off forever. And ounce of prevention is little tidbits to help you do that. And today is no different. So we are gonna talk about um, the five questions. So in today's ounce of prevention, um, uh, I talked about when you're, sh basically when you're shopping, but this could be also like if you're gonna take home food from the um, a restaurant. But basically, any trigger foods, any foods that you know, you can either get out of control with, or um, they're very, very tempting, or that sort of thing. The best way, to avoid having a, a moment that you won't be happy with is to never have it in the house. That's the environmental control, which is like the one of the most important things that you can do in order to help yourself lose weight and keep it off, is to not have it around. We A lot of us think that it's willpower, that we should be able to sit and stare at a cake and just decide we're not gonna have it because we're trying to lose weight. OMG, it does not work that way. <laughs> if you're staring at a cake, you're eating the cake. I mean, and that's not a failure or a weakness of yours. That's the way humans work. So the point is to not be sitting in front of a cake staring at it. Unless it's your birthday and it's your favorite cake. Yeah, I mean, obviously there are gonna be times when you want these things, but it's the sort of onslaught and the forever. There are so many issues that could go on here, but anyway, we'll, we'll get into some of them. But I'm just gonna go over the five questions. And this is, what I'm talking about is, if you're sort of, you should never go to the market hungry, but if you do, a lot of things become really interesting looking. Um, and you think about taking them in. And Sometimes that's great because you try a new food and it's wonderful. If it's a protein, if it's a fruit or a vegetable, if it's a new spice, these are all fantastic things to bring home and try. If it's a candy or a cookie or an ice cream and you're trying hard to um, keep those things out of the house, then those aren't gonna be great things to stick into your um, cart. And truly the decision point is, is there at the market. Um, yeah, I was gonna say another time to probably not go is if you're bored, but the truth is you can get good ideas for food. So it's really, we're talking about trigger foods, right? If it's chips, crackers, or sweets. So here are the five questions. The first one is, do you actually want it? So you may, I know that sounds basic, but you may look at something, it may look good, and then all of a sudden, if you didn't ask yourself, you just shove it in the, in the uh, cart. But if you ask yourself, do I really want it? It stops you in your tracks and you can say yes or no. If the answer is no, great, move along. You're done. All done. Just one question was all you needed. If you're saying, no, I, I kind of do want that, then the next one is, when will I eat it? The reason why that's an important question is because we're separating out a conscious, enjoyable event from a shameful, guilt-ridden, regretful episode of just shoveling things in your mouth. Okay, the shoveling things in your mouth is not about fuel, it's not about feeling good, it's, it's often about a um, temporary way of coping. Now I'll tell you, sometimes that's an important thing, so it's not that we're taking that away completely, but if, it's, if it, that's not, you'll have less of a chance of doing that if it's not around you, and that's what we're talking about here. So I want the treats or the things that you have to be an enjoyable event. So are you gonna have it after dinner? Are you gonna have it Sunday morning? Is it a brunch food? Is it something? So it takes away the likelihood that you're gonna, you know, get into the car, rip open the package, and just inhale it. 
that's why that is a really important question. When will I eat it? Oh, I know exactly when I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna have it after dinner today. Perfect, okay, that's an answer, great, good job. Okay, so the third one is how much of it will I eat? The point of that one is, if you're getting a giant bag of something, you may just want a taste of it. So are you okay with throwing the rest away? Are you gonna give it to your office? Are you gonna, maybe it's better to buy a smaller pack. Maybe it just made reminded you of something else you really want and you should get that and not this huge thing. So figuring out how much of it you actually want and what you're gonna do, the plan for the rest. Because the often the point isn't that I want a piece of cake. It's the whole cake that you end up eating. That's the issue. So it, you're not a demon for wanting yummy things. It's it's the we can't be blind to what's going to happen the rest of the time. You know, with the rest of it, that's fooling ourselves, and that's the piece I don't want you to get into because that's the unconscious piece. Having a piece of something, more power to you. Life is you know made for enjoyment. Okay, so we have: Do you really want this? When am I going to eat it? How much will I eat? And then this is the this is the one that always is helpful to me. Um, am I willing to accept the number of calories? And that one always is the one that pretty much works. Um, and I just had this experience yesterday, literally, at Trader Joe's, in the checkout, which is classic, right, for this kind of thing, like trigger food, dark chocolate caramels in a little plastic thing. And so I looked at it, that's just up my alley, and I looked at how many, two pieces were 140 calories. I find that hard to believe because they were huge, but okay, I'm gonna take them at face value. There were probably about 10, there were 20 pieces in there, so there were 10 servings. So that would have been 1,400 calories if I ate the whole thing. The point is you eat the whole thing. Okay, that, that's the point about this environmental control thing. You have to assume you're eating the whole thing because even if I ate one every day and I've decided it was after dinner, I'm eating 1,400 calories. Now the truth is 1,400 calories is a lot of calories, but it's not, you know, it's not 8,000 calories. So you get to decide about that. But I knew that if I wanted to um, really have a dark, uh, chocolate caramel that I wanted to go to Seize Candy and have a, those really good ones. I mean, Trader Joe's does good stuff, but it, it, it wouldn't have been satisfying. That's what I knew about it. It was a substitute for what I really would have wanted. And at that point, if the desire stayed with me, I would go to Seize and get that candy. The desire did not stay with me because I actually didn't want it until I saw it at Trader Joe's at the checkout line. <laughs> so, so the adding up the calories is an is such a great exercise. It really helps me stay conscious of the decisions. So I put the thing back and went on to check out. And so the the next the last question follows on that. Do you still want it? After you figure out how many calories it is, when you're going to eat it, all that stuff. If the answer is heck yeah, you have just made a conscious choice, my friend, and you go for it and go for and prosper. That is excellent. You have a you have a you know when you're going to have it, you're excited about it, you're willing to accept the consequences of it. You realize that the whole thing may be eaten or you have a plan for it. That's a conscious choice. And you get to make those all day long, my friend. That is personal responsibility and yay for you. So that's and that to me at this point happened sort of automatically. Like I said, I picked up that thing, I calculated the calories and I put it down. Like that, because the five questions just happened in there. So that's what I want for you. If you start to do this, some things will get through and some things won't. And that's perfect. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for conscious choices and the realization that environmental control is a real thing. It's not a weakness of yours. If it's there, we'll eat it. So we have to be careful about what we bring in. That's it, my friends. That is the whole thing about this ounce of prevention. A tool for you to use to help you in the market, uh, whenever you're out and looking at things, and to help you uh, remember your goals, which is always how we meet them, right? How we, and if one of our goals is lose weight or keep it off, that's how we do it. It's always go so good to be with you. I'm loving you. Mwah. I will see you next week, Thursday at 1230, 
and Thanksgiving's coming up, so I hope you're having good prep for it. And I would love it if you would share this video, just anyone who you think would benefit from this information about these five questions. That would be great. And I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll see you real soon. Bye.